Assalamu alaikum, everyone. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Sahdoud, for the kind introduction and for the invitation uh, to join you today in celebration of the 2023 Max Scholarship recipients. Uh, it's truly an honor to deliver this keynote address and congratulate an exceptional group of students from the Muslim community. I live and work in Kitchener Waterloo here in Ontario, which is situated on the traditional territory of the neutral Anishinaabe and Haudenosaunee peoples. I'm privileged to be living, working, and, and studying on this indigenous land. Having that privilege motivates me to do the work I do on a daily basis, to be an agent for positive change in my personal and professional uh, communities. The title of my short speech rising to the opportunity of building a just, sustainable, and resilient human civilization is inspired by my personal and professional journey. So I'll tell you a bit of both and end with what I think a responsible and active citizenship as the, as the practical translation of our role as, as God's vicegerents on earth, Khulafa Allah of al -Ard. As a high school student, I excelled academically in science and humanities. My interest in environmental issues started then when we were taught about pollution in general and impacts of climate change in particular. So I continued in science at the university level, empowered and motivated. I met professors who recognized my potential as a successful scientist from as early as a second year in the undergraduate chemistry program. These professors went out of their way to mentor and support me to follow my dreams of higher education. Traveling to the United States and then Canada came with a lot of challenges as I had a very good life in the UAE and was surrounded by my loving family and friends. But I could not fulfill my dreams of higher education there. So leaving my comfort zone was like breaking out of a shell and I'm glad I did as it opened up a whole new world of opportunities to learn and grow professionally and personally. So take home message number one, know yourself, strengths and weaknesses, and do not be afraid to leave your comfort zone. Have a dream that excites you, utilizes your strengths and forces you to improve your weaknesses. Work hard on your dreams to become reality. The path might not be easy, because worthy and precious things in life come with heavy investments and lots of sacrifice. Take home message number two, make lemonade when life throws lemons at you. Surround yourself with wise elders, supportive friends, and visionary mentors, and make the most of the opportunities that present themselves to you. Remember that most of the time, hardships are blessings in disguise. My academic career started at Laurier. As a chemistry professor, I teach courses related to environmental and physical chemistry. The research part keeps my mind active and creative. It allows me to share knowledge with students and we create new knowledge together. It allows me to meet other scientists, visit their labs and share with them the excitement of discovery. Education about environmental issues and what each one of us can do to lower our carbon emissions and footprint is the first step in creating scientifically literate citizens equipped with the evidence needed to address this existential threat to our civilization. So the skills that are most important for a successful career in science are time management. Everything in life comes and goes, but time, every minute passes is one we never get back again. Persistence. A career in science and research means that one has to be persistent, persistent in the face of failure and never gives up. Succeeding in everything without struggle and failure means we're not learning new things. Failure can create new horizons for improving our methodologies and creativity. Over time, one develops the ability to recognize when to best stop and change course when all possibilities have been exhausted to solve a certain problem or situation. Determination and tenacity. The desire to succeed should be coupled with the determination to demand of oneself the best it can give. Financial management. To do research, I manage the grants that I receive from the university, the government, and the private sector. 
I have to plan according to the budget and hire the right people for the right tasks. Professionalism, there is severe competition in research that is sometimes ugly. I value fair play and healthy competitions. I do my best to be ethical and professional in my dealings and interactions with senior scientists, colleagues, and students. In the end, what wins the day are novel ideas, solid science, and the ability to deliver and research on research tasks and milestones. Lastly, self-care. We are made of three intertwined parts, body, mind, and soul. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to be proactive in self-care and apply the airline safety rule, put on the oxygen mask on you first and then help others. We need to feed our bodies with an active lifestyle that combines wholesome and halal foods and products as well as exercise and habits for optimum physical health. We need to feed our minds with beneficial knowledge for this life and the hereafter. And we need to feed our soul with spiritual practices and guidance that implants hope, compassion, positivity, resilience, and empathy for optimum mental health. So take home message number three, a career, message is, a career in science is amazing and unique and never gets boring. Your professional value comes from knowing what skills do you have to offer humanity. So you have to know, it, you have to know clearly what skills you have to offer. Learn about fixed versus growth mindsets and choose to have a growth mindset and to take care of yourself daily. I'd like to focus the last part of my speech on what I think of responsible and active citizenship. Canada is a land of abundant opportunities and vast room for improvement. The degree of a society's level of civilization is measured by a number of indicators. Treatment of public spaces, ability to uphold the ideals of human rights and the treatment of the most vulnerable and marginalized members of society, dominant behaviors in times of conflict and war, level of consumer versus producer mindsets, capacity to be resilient and self-sufficient in the energy, food, and water sectors, ability to live up to the highest levels of ethical standards in the pursuit of and applications of scientific knowledge. So what score would you give Canada in each of these indicators? This is an open question I want you to reflect on. My final message is, make sure that whatever you end up in this world, that you work consciously and with determination to eradicate ignorance, eliminate poverty and discrimination, and use your right to free speech to call for the humanity, dignity, equal opportunity, and justice for all people, no double standards. You would do so by using science, art, media, journalism, and even religion, for they are powerful tools in shaping societal value systems. What excites me the most personally for high achieving Muslim graduates like yourselves is that equipped with the science we know at this point in history, coupled with the ethical teachings of Islam, you stand out as the educated citizens and political leaders this country needs the most. My generation and your generation have unique opportunities to build a new future for humanity that is just resilient and more harmony in nature with nature. Community engagement and knowledge mobilization need to happen at the same time. We are all in this together. Always remember, that Canada is waiting for you to emerge as leaders and true influencers and make it a better place for everyone. Congratulations to all of you again and my very best wishes for continued success. Jazakallah khairan wa barakallahu fikum. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you, Hind, for that wonderful talk and also for, for that very um, exhaustive list of of uh, points that you shared and I, and I think a lot of them relate to every single one of us and especially the last point. I, I really want to make sure everyone reflects on that last point as they uh, heard you. So we do have time for questions um, for Dr. Labadle. So uh, if you have a question for her, please feel free to raise your hand or type it in the chat. And maybe I'll start off by asking you, 
Um, to share one of your most challenging experiences as you went through your academic journey, especially in becoming a professor, they're they're very hard to find positions, and and so if you if you would be able to share something like that. Yes, I mean when I started applying for academic positions, I was still in the, in the United States. So the circumstances were that I had friends in Canada who immigrated before me and they were, you know, they gave me a very realistic advice. They said, you know, um, don't come to Canada if you don't have a job. Uh, they said it right, right up front. And I think I appreciated um, their advice because, you know, in the U.S., after a postdoc, we don't get an academic position right away, which often happens. Uh, you go for another postdoc. Most of my lab mates ended up doing you know, two and three postdocs before they landed their first academic position. Um, but timing, I guess, was was right. When I was applying to come um, to Canada for, for an academic position, uh, being very specialized in, in physical chemistry, which is one of the one of the hardest subjects in chemistry that doesn't attract a lot of people, um, there were positions open at the time at the assistant level, assistant professor level with you know, Jack. So when I applied, I interviewed and I, I accepted the offer that came um, and, and I didn't, you know, and then the rest is history, as they said. I think that one of the best, one of the largest challenges I faced um, as an academic um, coming to Canada was, was the fact that the chemistry community was a tight knit uh, community. Um, you know, it, 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 it was about, I don't know, 3,000 or 3,500 chemists in, in the whole country and everyone knew each other and they, you know, they recruited each other's students and, they had each other students. So break into that circle was the hardest. It took years, years of hard and persistent work um, to get my name recognized, to get my face out there in conferences, to get my papers published and recognized. I mean, when I when I my PhD prof advisor and postdoc advisor was known to maybe five people in Canada. <laughs> and and I told the five that I am in Canada now as a faculty member, which is hilarious. But you know, when you apply for grants, like what are the chances that these five will be on the, you know, on, on the panel and will will be the internal voice to advocate for you for for funding? Of course, it's almost zero. Um, so it took a lot of work, you know, on, on top of the um, on top of the regular work that one has to do to actually just build that, break into that um, professional network of chemists within Canada. Um, but once that was done and the reputation was established and, and science is international by, by nature anyways, um, I think th things just got started to get uh, easier. I wanted to actually ask you another question before we end, and I know you have to go to class. As... Yeah. As someone who did a PhD in chemistry, uh, I do notice that women in the field are, are very far and few. And, and I know that there is a lot of our candidates here who are female pursuing engineering, even, you know, males in a less um, Muslims uh, in specific fields are also less recognized. How do we push through that barrier and really show our resilience and, and make sure that we are successful in what we do and show others that we do deserve to be where we are, regardless of whatever gender um, or the religion we have. Right. I mean, this is, a, this is, the, this is the, the challenge of, of, of this generation, honestly, and I hope it will, be, it will end with our generation and things will be much, much better in the future. Um, I think the climate now for recognizing diversity within the academic system is much better than 18 years ago when I started myself. When, when I started, there was talk about women and uh, you know importance of having women at the faculty level and uh, in front of students and classrooms and all of that. Um, but you have to understand, and academic institutions have a very um, um, you know very high, low turnover very low turnover. The tenure system creates careers for people where they spend 30, 40 years sometimes. Um, and unless, and there are talks now actually about changing the, the whole tenure system, but that's aside, what would you do? I mean, your passion for science is gonna shine no matter what. Um, there are multiple avenues where you can put your talent for science in, in action. Um, we need scientists, not only in academic institutions, teaching students or doing research, but we need them in the government. We need them in industry. We need them 
um, and you know, in different um, non-traditional organizations, because as when a scientist, for example, chooses to do law or to do business, um, the, the scientific skills are transferable to these fields and, and can really make you stand out. Um, so absolutely, I mean, you don't worry about the job market down the road. I think what matters if you are a, a, um, entering university this year or have been in the university for, for, for the first year, is that you try to learn as much as possible in terms of skills, in terms of interaction with professors, in terms of getting um, accomplishments beyond courses, uh, because you, you wanna build a CV, uh, a professional CV, that can only be done when you have professors um, writing you letters, for example, or when you get to work in a professor lab and as, a, as an assistant, or as a research assistant, and you get to have your name on a paper or you know, on a conference paper and you get to travel. So I think it's um, you know, and, and your own your own career is so inspiring, Nahida. I mean, if if you for the audience here, if you just look up, you know, mashallah, mashallah, Nakwad, <laughs> the LinkedIn profile for Nahida, you will see that she was, you know, she thought of her skills are are uh, um, as as a way of uh, benefiting society, and she ended up being involved with student leaders. Um, and at the same time, you know, being productive, a productive scientist as well. Um, so it's it's the versatility, the versatility of, of a career in education and science will, will really give you opportunities down the road for sure. Okay, great. So I'm recognizing the time and recognizing you have to lecture in a short while. I really want to thank you again for your making yourself available to, to give advice to our scholarship winners and uh, we will reach out to you again and ask you for that list. I think that was a extremely valuable list and and I want to emphasize some of your last words again about how don't go into and I'm rephrasing here but don't go into your university just to take the courses. Try to try to learn as much as you can and this is outside your courses learning, not just your courses. So uh thank you so much Dr. Alab Abadle for for your time and inshallah we'll have you uh have you again at one of our other events thank you yeah, thank you very much enjoy the festivities and congratulations again everyone take care bye